This is the Pretty Deadly Self-Defense Podcast. I'm Susie Collick, the founder of Pretty Deadly Self-Defense. And I'm Kate Lismer, a writer, traveler, mother, and expat. As a woman who lives in a big city and likes to travel, I'm very curious about self-defense. I've never had any training, so I have a lot of questions. And I have a lot of answers. We figured you probably have similar questions too, and so we thought it'd be a great idea to share this conversation and put it in a podcast. So welcome to the Pretty Deadly Self-Defense Podcast. We've talked about this in the past, having these sort of go-to moves, and I don't know if this is something that's taught in other self-defense courses, but I think for a lay person, there's this idea of like, all right, what are Susie's top three moves? Like, what should I, what are like the need to know things that... I would learn right away if I was in one of your courses. Do you have top moves that you think people should know about? Or do you have a strategy for getting the basics down? No and yes. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I don't, I don't believe so much in like, you know, top moves and and the three fundamental moves you have to, you know, it's like those things on medium you get that like, you know, the five oh, yes. things List- to make listicles. You see- yes. Yeah. Listicles. Yeah. I don't really have those because I feel that it's, you know, in a, in a situation where things have escalated to a physical self-defense point, whatever comes out of your body is self-defense. If you start saying, no, it's only this, it's only that, you know, or these are the top three things I need to know. If you, if you are suddenly defending yourself and you can't think of those things, then what? Right. No, if, because, because our brains have a tendency to latch on. These are the three most important things. They're all important, you know, but so when we're learning moves in Pretty Deadly, what we're learning is to relate self-defense moves to the movements you do with your body every day. So, and I, I've used this example several times already in these po- in this podcast of putting your hair behind your ears. When women do this, it's the same movement as an elbow strike. Mm-hmm. And we just want to relate that because you, you know how to put your hair behind your ears. You're comfortable doing that. It's not associated with danger or fear. It's a really natural movement because you've probably been practicing it from the time you had hair, possibly before if you were imprinting your mother, right? So it's it's a very, very natural movement and you're very, very comfortable with it. And I wonder- And you can feel safe with it. For this move, um, is it more about self-protection, like getting your elbow up to uh, stop um, a hit to your face or something? Or is it actually to- strike somebody with your elbow it's a strike with your elbow okay so the strike is it's kind of a scrape up Mm -hmm. as opposed to putting your elbow up and then poking someone with it Mm -hmm. so it really is like putting your hair behind your ears and we use it to if somebody's really in your face we use that to make space Mm -hmm. you know because maybe you don't have to punch someone for example um when we punch someone well, if we don't know a really effective punch, we tend to pull our arms back kind of our, like our fist back kind of by our armpit. And A, somebody can see you doing that. Like the wind up. Yeah, kind of a, a bit of a wind up punch. Yeah, <laughs> or it's, 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 it's cocking. You cock your punch. Right. Right. So, but doing this, one, gives it away that you're about to do something. And two, this requires a lot of muscle and force and strength. Mm. in order for that to be effective. And it's very difficult for a lot of people to have that muscle and strength. It's coming from the side of your body. It's only using your shoulder and your arm, right? Sometimes you might be pushing your body behind it, but then it becomes a push. So whereas, and if somebody's like really, really up in your face, cocking your fist back and then trying to punch them, you don't have a lot of room to move. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you just lift your elbow up, as though you're putting your hair behind your ears, you're already making space. Right. Naturally. It will make contact. Your elbow is sharp. Even if you feel it's not that sharp, it's sharp. Trust me. <laughs> so, And that will make someone move away. Right. right. It might not make them move away by like, you know, a meter or two meters or 10 feet for Americans. But it will make enough space so that you can get away. And that's the whole point. So the same, like we have a kick that we call open the door kick. 
which is, you know, when you've had your arms full of groceries or books or whatever, and you've kicked a heavy door open with your foot. It's the exact same move. Mm -hmm. You've done it a thousand times. It's so natural to you that you don't even think about it when you do it in daily life. And you usually in daily life do it very perfectly, meaning your distance is perfect and your balance is perfect because we're not thinking of it in terms of self-defense. We're thinking of it as like, you know, oh, I got to get through this door. And this is like, because I'm picturing it again, it would be a sort of lift and then kick down not coming up kick, right? Correct. Yeah. So it's, a, it's when we're opening a door with our foot, like the whole flat of our foot, right? We're walking to the door. We lift up the knee and we push out with the foot. Mm-hmm. And That's, why is that better than just, I don't know, like a soccer kick? Uh, a soccer kick will not make distance, mm-hmm. meaning swinging from the knee. Right. Right. So Swinging from the knee will not make distance, for one thing. And we really want to make distance. That's our main goal, Mm -hmm. is to make space so we can get away. It will also potentially harm you. You What are you kicking? If you're kicking, I don't know, um, what if you're kicking somebody's perineum, for example, the space between the genitals and the anus, right? That's somebody's entire body weight. Mm -hmm. That's going to hurt you, not them. Also, I wonder if there's just more... Again, I'm just imagining, but but maybe there's more possibility for someone to catch your foot. You know, I, I remember my brother and I used to play karate, and that was mm-hmm. always like the first move we learned was when someone kicks you, you just grab their foot and pull it up. And I wonder if maybe uh, this method of the kicking the door method kind of gives people less of a chance to grab and twist or I don't know. Um, I don't know if it does or doesn't. I mean, I think when we're playing like you and your brother, and I did that with my brothers too, when you're playing, that's a different kind of energy, different Mm -hmm. speed, different intent. Right. You know, our people, if you're, I mean, if you see like two professional karate athletes going at it, the chance of actually kick, catching somebody's foot when they're kicking is not so great. Mm hmm. Right. Simply because they're really fast and they're very precise. Right. So and when we're in a defense situation, we we're moving. We're full of adrenaline. So we're moving with a lot of power. We're also moving with more speed than normal. Mm -hmm. So is the other person. So are they going to be able to catch that foot? I don't know. But what I do know is that we can make space. And what I do know is that we already have the move. We don't need to we don't need to practice it for 20 years because you've been practicing it for 20 years. Right. Unless you're 18, <laughs> in which case, less. <laughs> but so, okay, so you have this uh, behind the ear uh, elbow, what do you call it? Punch? It's an elbow strike. Elbow strike. Mm-hmm. And then the door kick, which we've also talked about these these moves. Yeah. And what was our third one? Um, one of my favorite moves in Pretty Deadly is uh, what we call the shut up move. So when you... Yeah, so you and your brother played karate, right? So you probably also did this. Like you kind of, with a very relaxed and open hand with the back of your hand, kind of whack each other on the shoulder, like shut up. Right. Right? So this exact same move is a really, really powerful strike. If just before impact, we make a tight fist. You want to keep your arm completely relaxed through the entire move, just like when you're saying shut up to a quote unquote loved one. <clears throat> but at the last second, because you know, why are we hitting people we love? But whatever. So at the last second we make a very tight fist. So you actually end up striking with the knuckle, the middle knuckle. That it doesn't matter where that lands, it's a very powerful strike. And it, that works if someone is to the side of you. Yeah, if somebody's coming up behind you or they slide over to the side, like at a mm. market or a mm-hmm. concert or something. It's a long, you know, it's at the full extension of your arm. So it's kind of like a longer, what I think of as a longer weapon, mm-hmm. right? But there's use for that as well, just in case somebody, again, if somebody sides up and you say no and they keep coming anyway. I'm just thinking, I mean, there's so many uh, different settings, right, where that could be useful. And 
I know that another thing we've talked about is all these different scenarios. Of course, Mm -hmm. um, the movements are going to vary depending on how fast or slow someone's coming at you and whether it's just to gain space or if you're actually looking to strike somebody. If someone was thinking of like, what are the, what do I really need to know? Do you have any sort of need to know advice when it comes to self-defense? Yeah. Um, so what we, what we're ultimately trying to learn in, in pretty deadly and in martial arts in general, um, how do I say it is, uh, <clears throat> learning how to use your body effectively and efficiently. Every part of your body can be used to create space, right? Whether it's a fist or a foot or an elbow or a knee. What is the most efficient thing to use in this moment? Now, if somebody's holding down one hand, what do you have free? You've got two legs and an arm free. How can you make space with that? If somebody's pinning you to the wall, how can you make space? What will come out of your body? How can you use your knee? How can you use your foot? How is your body effective and efficient in these ways? So when we're training, even in our first level courses, what I try to encourage people to do is we move very slow through these scenarios because this is the moment we have to learn, right? But what I encourage people to do is to stop and look and think, what is closest right now? What's the most natural movement you can make? Mm -hmm. Is it easiest for your knee to swing up in a head smash? Is it more natural for your elbow to drop on somebody's spine, for example? Mm-hmm. You know, what, what's the most efficient tool for you to use right now? Mm-hmm. So it's learning how our body works. It's just simple body dynamics. You know, we, we don't think about how our body works when we're running because we learned at some point how to run. Right. But there's a lot of mechanics happening. Mm-hmm. If we really break it down and think about it, we think like, oh, okay, I have to put my foot here and I have to rock the pelvis forward and da-da-da-da-da. But it's the same in this sense. We have all these body parts, but we usually don't think about them very much. And especially in terms of Mm self-defense, we tend to think of only our hands, Mm -hmm. whether it's a fist or it's an open hand to try and get someone to stop. But we've got, as I said, elbows, we've got knees, we've got feet, we've got fingers, we've got shoulders, we've got Mm -hmm. a head. Yeah. So what is most efficient? What's closest? Mm -hmm. And what move can be most natural? Because our natural movements are always stronger than an unnatural movement like a roundhouse punch or or cocking a punch as we were talking about earlier. Right. Well, that makes a lot of sense. And also it's helpful too because it's pretty simple to remember if you're in a situation where you're feeling – vulnerable and stuck like you can imagine what do I free what you know yeah efficient like efficiency what what is available to me yeah exactly exactly we were doing I was giving a private um training to a stunt woman here in Germany recently who was preparing for an audition and she needed to learn some fight moves and some combat moves and I felt like one of the most, def- she had no idea what was going to happen in the audition. She just knew that this would probably be a part of it. And she needed to, she needed to be able to move naturally. Mm-hmm. So what looks good on camera on the movies isn't necessarily what's realistic in real life. I, I want to say that first and foremost. But in trying to coach her um, to move like someone who knows martial arts, someone who knows how to fight, we, we did a little exercise where we took a walk, just a long walk on a straight line. And with each move, we stopped and we thought, okay, from this position, what would be my next defense move? What weapon is available? What's the most powerful thing I can do from right here? So whether it was, oh, from here, it would be smart for my elbow to come up. From here, it would be natural for my knee to swing. And it was, a, it was a wonderful exercise to work with and to learn because when you train martial arts for a really long time, this is how you start to think of your body. Mm-hmm. It's, it's kind of the difference between a trained fighter and, and not a Everyone trained else. fighter. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, that's great. And like, again, this is for someone who 
hasn't had, you know, these courses, I think it's just interesting to think about how we can make our, our bodies valuable to ourselves, you know, and really, uh, capitalizing on what we already know. Yeah. What a nice thing to say, how we can make our body valuable to ourselves. I mean, it already is, Mm -hmm. but that's a beautiful way to put it. Pretty Deadly Self-Defense is a self-defense program developed by 20-year martial arts veteran and violent crime survivor, Susie Collett. Based in Berlin, Germany, you can also find Pretty Deadly in a growing number of cities around the world through the Pretty Deadly website or the Pretty Deadly app. Learn more about Susie and the Pretty Deadly community at prettydeadlyselfdefense.com. Pretty Deadly Self-Defense.